Hey folks, Matt from ArtOfTheImage.com. A great question in here from Rohan Agarwal. Hope I'm saying that right, Rohan. Um, that's his YouTube username, I'm assuming his name. He says, hey, I wanted to buy a new DSLR and was confused between the D5300, D5500, and D7200. So we're talking about the Nikons here. Uh, I, have, I have already used the D5100 for four years and was also considering to buy the Nikon 35mm and Nikon 70 to 300 millimeter. What is your suggestion? Now, um, before I even saw this, Ted P wrote in and said, I will get a refurbished 7100, so that's the Nikon D7100. Tons of features that the 3000 and 5000 series lack. No built-in motor to use older, cheaper screwdrive AF motors. They have no AF fine tuning, no HSS for outdoor flash photography. And they're also just worse cameras when it comes to low light and AF systems. The D3000 series is the cheapo entry level. The 5000 series is a slight step above them. They are the smallest, lightest DSLRs that you can get. The 7000 series is a prosumer APC uh, series. All the bells and whistles. 71 refurbished is only about $600. Even if you don't know or care about these features yet you will once you you will once you learn more about photography i bought a 5300 not knowing any great little uh any better great little camera but now that i know more i can't stand the lack of features like the one i listed if the d500 didn't exist i would totally get a 7100 or a 200 if you can afford the two grand a d500 is amazing as far as lenses go i would buy a body only then i would get an 18 to 200 to learn on that um, that way you learn what focal lengths you like 50 millimeter 1.8 is an amazing lens. Definitely get one if you do any portraits at all. I have a 55 to 300 great tele lens for sure. If you have an extra 600, an 18 to 300 would be uh, great. Crazy range, super useful even as a pro. Ultimate lens for outdoor candids. And then Rohan had answered Ted back and he said uh, he was saying thanks and I would like to buy a new one instead of refurbished. So I might go for the 7200. Thanks for the response. So um, some great response from Ted. Ted's basically summarized a lot of what I would say. 7100 is most of the camera of the 72 unless you're shooting a lot of fast action at high frames per second where you need the better shot buffer on the 7200 because that was the main difference between the two cameras. Then I would totally get a 7100. I would even buy a refurbished because for the price you're getting one heck of a camera. Ted makes some good points. Those are reasons that he points out. The uh, no built-in motor. So what he's saying there is like the AFD lenses and and even the AF pre D lenses there's a lot of great lenses around to be had at a great bargain used you can't use those on the 3000 series you can't use them on the 5000 series because those cameras don't have a built-in AF motor um, and the newer lenses the G lenses they have the motor built in and hence they work on the lower series but that's one of the advantages when you get higher up, you can still get the motor drive in the camera, such as the 7100 and the 7200. So it's a great ability to be able to use those lenses. Uh, no AF fine tuning, that's big. So you can fine tune your AF on the 7000 series bodies. The no HSS, so that's your high speed sync for flash outside. So when you're in bright sunlight, that's a big bonus. So that's, that's a feature too, that's really good. I'm not, I'd have to double check. I'm not sure if that's not available on the 5500. Um, Cause I would disagree with Ted in the one area here that the 5500 sensor is as good or maybe even better than the 7200. They're so close, it's cutting hairs, splitting hairs. But the 5500 is a very, very nice camera. It, it's not as feature rich, Ted's correct, but as far as the sensor goes, I think absolutely amazing performance, as good as a 71 or a 72. Um, yeah, some good choices on lenses using a you know an all round lens like an eighteen to two hundred or an eighteen to three does give you the option if you're still learning to figure out what focal lengths you like. You can go back after you've been shooting for a while, look and see what you use the most, and then you can buy into primes or a higher quality zoom that covers that area. So that's that's, that's a good option, something to think about. Totally agree with the fifty mil f one eight because you know I love that lens. I talk about that lens all the time. I've got a 50 f1.8 STM right now for Canon, 50 f1.8G for Nikon. Love the 50s. Um, the 50 f1.8G from Nikon is probably one of the best lenses in their arsenal. Best value, best price, and sharp as attack. Beautiful bouquet. It's actually got as good or better bouquet than the f1.4. You're just gaining speed with the f1.4. So some great feedback there from Ted. Um, no problem to Ron if he wants to get a 72, but even then, uh, I wouldn't necessarily shy away from a refurb. If you get it from Nikon as a factory refurb, it's 
probably come right off the line. Something was a little out of spec. Technician dialed it in. You get an amazing camera for an amazing price. Um, what do you guys think? Do you agree with what Ted's recommended here? Would you go with the refurb 7100? Do you not like refurbs? Are you more like what Rohan said? You'd rather get a new 72. Leave your comments below. Let's discuss it. Let's discuss the 7000 series and what lenses you go with. Do you like Ted's recommendations? I certainly love the Nikon 50mm f1.8G. Let me know, folks. Comments below. Let's discuss it. Let's help Rohan out. Thanks for uh, your question, Rohan. Thanks for your feedback, Ted. And stay tuned, folks. We'll be back soon here at artoftheimage.com.